What's up guys, it's FM Tech Source, and today we're going to be reviewing the LG G6 after using it for the past 7 days as my daily driver and I've come to some conclusions that I'm confident with. But let's start off with that design. The design of the G6 is simple. It has a sturdy metal frame flanked by two pairs of glass, the Gorilla Glass 3 on the front and Gorilla Glass 5 on the back. The Ice Platinum model I have here hides fingerprints well, but the same can't be said about the black model. The G6 has a unibody, which means that the battery won't be removable, which is a trade-off LG went with to gain the IP68 rating for dust and water resistance. Signature LG design elements are present throughout the body, like the power button located on the back that also doubles as a fingerprint sensor. On top of the device, you'll find a 3.5mm headphone jack. It's nice to see that LG hasn't jumped on the Apple bandwagon here. LG has also given the user the choice of expandable storage, something that sets this phone apart from a lot of other Android flagships. On the bottom you'll find a USB-C type port as well as a single speaker. Watching movies or enjoying music in quiet areas was alright, but trying to fill a larger or louder space proved to be a challenge. Here's an audio sample. LG has cut out all the BS and has taken the construction and hardware of the G6 back to the basics. I feel like this was the right move, especially after last year's underwhelming G5. The narrow bezels on the top, bottom and sides combined with the tall and odd aspect ratio of 18x9 all contribute to giving this 5.7 inch display usability with one hand. The phone is also flat unlike the Galaxy S8 which should make for less accidental taps. Still, I did experience ghost taps here and there mainly when I was consuming media with the phone in landscape mode. You might have also noticed that the display has curved corners. LG says this curved LCD design protects the panel in the event of a drop. I don't know how accurate this is, but it definitely looks fresh. The panel itself is a quad HD LCD as I mentioned before. LG strikes the perfect balance between color and contrast without it looking too saturated like some OLED panels I've seen. The LG G6 also supports Dolby Vision, but I wasn't able to test this outside of the short video included by LG. There isn't much content out there that takes advantage of this technology, but I hear that Netflix stated to update their mobile app very soon. One thing that takes away from the display are these black borders that show up when consuming content that is not natively 18x9, which is a lot considering most content as of today is at 16x9 ratio. Luckily though, until apps start supporting this newer aspect ratio, LG has implemented a feature that forces scales the app into the correct ratio. This won't affect media however. There is a decently sized 3300 mAh battery in here. It's big but nothing out of the ordinary. I was able to get around 4 hours of on screen time which is good. It also supports Qualcomm's quick charge and wireless charging so those are a nice addition. It runs the Snapdragon A21 which is a very capable chipset. It hits new highs in our benchmark tests while keeping the phone's temperature manageable. Let's shift gears real quick and get into the software. So Android 7 with LG's UI running on top. LG's UI has improved a lot over the last few years, but there's still room to grow with the UI feeling like a melting pot of Samsung and Huawei software. One cool software trick is enabled by the aspect ratio of the display, so when multitasking you get two square apps which improves the experience in my opinion. Another really cool software addition is the iOS similar universal search. However, this is only enabled when using the home screen that doesn't have an app drawer. With a long press of the home button, you get into the Google Assistant, and this is actually the first phone besides the Google Pixel to have this. Overall, the software was okay. Definitely a little more polishing is needed, but I was able to daily drive it without any issues. Turning over to the cameras, we can see that they've managed to keep the module flush to the body while including two 13 megapixel sensors. Now, even though they're the same resolution, they do have different properties. The first lens has an f1.8 aperture with optical image stabilization and a 71 degree field of view, while the wide angle lens is an f2.4 with a 125 degree field of view, but it lacks OIS and weirdly enough, autofocus. The photos are impressive with great detail, vibrant colors and good dynamic range. The wide angle does suffer in low light conditions with its higher aperture, so it's better to use the narrower sensor in these situations. We get a 5 megapixel camera on the front with a 100 degree field of view, but we're not actually restricted to this angle though because in the software we can switch between portrait mode and group mode. The results come out great in good lighting and the wide angle lets you fit in a few frames without any issues. When it starts to get dimmer, the camera does suffer however. With the G6, LG has taken it back to the basics and they've done a phenomenal job. It has everything you'd expect from a 2017 flagship while pushing the boundaries in design and display. There's still no word on how it stacks up against the Galaxy S8, but I'll be sure to compare the two once I get my Samsung device in hand. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to leave a like 
and I'll see you guys in the next one.